just like the real car thrilled American buyers in the years just after World War II, Danbury Mint's 1948 Chevrolet Fleetline Aero sedan proved to be an eye grabber even before we'd wiped it down and installed the rear fender skirts. The two-tone green paint, dead-on fastback sedan casting, and Danbury's usual spotless polish and assembly had us sold on the model's quality immediately. And checking out the thin section chrome trim everywhere, from the window frames to the delicate strakes that run on the fenders. Heavier gauge flash is worn on the car's massive front end and its bumpers, and in between, smaller details like the door handles, fleet line, hood badge, and the hood ornament, accented here with a clear element just like the original cars, are precision scaled notes that pulled us in and kept us looking for more. Beneath that ornament, DM's take on the classic 90 horse stove bolt 6 is utterly complete, and the 216 cube engine is painted, plumbed, wired, and labeled. DM's done the deed with steel wire, plastic and vinyl castings, and tamped on detailing that includes labels on the oil bath air filter, the battery, and the overflow tank on the firewall. Look closer, and there's even fuel in the wee glass bowl beneath the single throat Carter car. The hood rises on real spring and scissor hinges and it closes just like the real thing. You push it down and back to get it into place. In the cabin, DM's laid on the charm, not to mention serious levels of texturing, paint detailing, and a high parts count. The top shelf cabin is fronted by a wood grain dash hosting a readable speedo and clock, as well as a legible radio face. Along with these, the dash is stubbled with knobs and sliders for the choke, heater, and vent, all arranged around the central speaker grill, done in a tidy, finned, and chromed casting. That wood grain pattern is so good that it looks real under all but the strongest magnification. Ditto the seats, which wear the Fleetline's optional two-tone Bedford cord cloth upholstery, replicated here with a tamped-on pattern that follows the castings perfectly on the tilt-back front seats and large, comfy-looking rear bench. Above it all is a multi-piece dome light and a believable headliner with working visors. These details and the multiple handles on the two-toned chrome-striped door panels show a huge investment in sweat equity on Danbury Mint's part. Out back, the trunk is accessible after pulling back on a bumper overrider, which pivots out of the way on a lovely hinge riveted to the chassis. Only then can the lid be lifted on a steel guide strut to reveal a matted floor and a removable full spare. Underneath, the Fleetline's skinny white walls are holding up the corners of a decently detailed chassis, and the plastic frame attached to the die-cast belly of the car contains well-done but static suspension assemblies front and rear. The steerable front wheels, separately cast muffin tailpipe, and a neat view of the stove bolts and nethers make this a trip well worth taking. Is Danbury Mint back? Were they ever really thinking of leaving, and what can we expect next? Hard questions to answer, and we won't speculate or even hint that we know what their next move might be. But we will tell you this, even after several hours spent with this beautiful new tool, we were still finding things to enjoy. It's true, models like this don't happen every day, and we'll take those days whenever they may occur. This one gets our very highest recommendation. For DieCast X Magazine, I'm Joe Kelly Jr. We'll see you on the shelves. Thanks for watching.